unlike most places that I go and speak, I actually just hang around here. I don't just get on the first plane out because this is a different sort of experience. And I'm hoping you'll find that as you wander around. Now, you've only been here a day, but in the best of all worlds, what would you hope to get out of being here aside from the fact you're performing? There are about three things, I think. One of them is I want to be with, with friends who share similar concerns, who share a love of justice, uh, who share a, a concern for the city, who share a concern for the the way the country's going, who share a concern for global Christianity. Mm. That's number one. Uh, number two, I want to get some, some ideas, some new ideas that will uh, probably eventuate in new song material. Uh, every musician probably has those times when you fall out of love with music, you fall out of love with poetry because you've been doing it just too long. Mm. Uh, you, you, you've been cranking them out. And so you go to a, a place and be with people where the ideas are flowing, the creativity is flowing, the, 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 the magic is happening. Mm -hmm. And I, for me, I think that's going to give me some, uh, lots of new ideas, lots of sort of new material to think about. And then the, the third thing is to be in beautiful North Carolina in the summer. Uh, I love this part of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was talking to Jim Wallace last night, and he said, look, let's just get lots of time to hang out. We need to catch up. So, you know, those three things are very important to me. Yeah, no, I totally get that. I feel the same way. You have come a fur piece from your lineage, your heritage, yeah. uh, to be where you are intellectually and spiritually. And I feel like one of the, one of the things that binds me to you and your writing is the fact that I, too, have come quite a fur piece from a very strict uh, Calvinist family, a very doctrinally pure, uh, where there were the roots of some justice concerns, but we never quite got there when I was a child. I went to a church where you, you didn't ask questions, and now I'm at a place where I am convinced that we have to hold, rethink Christianity, rethink what it means to follow Jesus. Uh, and so I've come a fur piece from my lineage as well. Yeah, talk a little bit about that journey. What were the steps for you? Because for me, it wasn't really theological. It was more what I'd describe as aesthetic. I just didn't want to spend the rest of my life with people who I had a gut reaction were flakes and mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and it wasn't who believes right or not. So the first thing was just personality clash with the whole evangelical movement. Sure, sure. And everything it represents. And then after that, the aesthetic question, no room for art, yeah, no exactly. room for creativity. Right. And everything has to serve God as if somehow beauty has needs justification. You have to have a cross. It's not good painting. enough. Right. So <laughs> I know you've been on a similar path, and I just want to yeah, hear your well, version for, of for, that. For me, it, was, it, it began, um, <laughs> curiously enough, with a music teacher, a piano teacher, mm -hmm. who uh, had come from a very strict and anal retentive Methodist family, pastor's family. Mm -hmm. She rebelled when she went to New York and went to Juilliard, came back to Michigan and taught. And she began to expose me to write, this was as a high school student, going to a Christian high school, exposed me to writers like um, Gilbert Hyatt and Alfred North Whitehead and other philosophers. And I came to the point of saying, wait a minute, all, all these proclamations, all these doctrines, all this stuff, I can't buy it. It just doesn't make sense to me. So I went off to college, uh, totally ran away from any connection with church or, or faith or whatever. Uh, loved the exploration, became a part of SDS and all that kind of stuff. Um, when I came back, it was uh, because I met a girl who became my fiance and then became my wife, who was a very creative thinker. Uh, she loved asking questions. She didn't have much room for a lot of uptight orthodoxy. Uh, and we together, after we got married, made this, made this journey really, uh, started reading uh, and just thinking and doing a lot of talking with people mm. uh, all around the country, all around the world, and basically came to a place where we moved to California, we're part of a very small, tiny inner city church, a, a church that had been formerly Southern Baptist, believe it or not, came out in 81 as welcoming and affirming, uh, got kicked out of the association and the convention, but it was a wonderful group of artistic, uh, aesthetic, mm -hmm. spiritually searching, questioning people who were busy at work in the Haight-Ashbury, loved the city, um, 
uh, created a hospice uh, for dying uh, gay friends, uh, and just, you know, kind of got involved in the city and felt like this is where I live, this is where I belong, this is what I want to do. So that's how, that's how I came back, and ever since it's been that kind of a, that kind of a journey. So I, I'm, I have a lot of questions. I am convinced uh, with all my heart that I'm a follower of Jesus, but whatever the heck that means. <laughs> how do you see the relationship between what you're doing now and the kind of social justice theme that you were following before in, in terms of this follower of Jesus? Well, I'm still following a social, I'm still yeah. following the social justice thing, but trying to be, trying to, to link up with Jubilee, trying to be an advocate for Jubilee, mm -hmm. uh, going in, a, a lot of my time is spent in fairly mainstream, somewhat conservative, somewhat orthodox churches. Mm -hmm. And my sense of my task there is to go there and maybe open a little tiny window, just a little bit, by saying things differently, by using different language, mm -hmm. by, uh, by, by singing about the call uh, to love the stranger and to live as friends in a world that says good fences make good neighbors. Just because somehow if you're a musician, they think you can't hurt them. Yeah, right. If you're a speaker, you're dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. But if you're a musician, you can say things sort of under the radar. Mm. And people go home saying, what was that he said? Mm. What was that in that song? And so that's my sense of my task in those places. But I also have gotten the chance to be in really interesting, mm. non-religious, very secular places, a corporate work uh, in which... I feel like my, 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 my purpose is to t sing about building community, about friendships, about what to do with wealth, about how to support uh, people who are disabled, etc. So, you know, the, I mean, one does, if you have a mindset, if you have an overarching mindset mm -hmm. that says, I want to do Jubilee whenever or wherever I can, then you find places and opportunities, I think. Do you think, yeah. in, in your mind, although you haven't been here before, but <clears throat> to me what you're describing is somewhat the call of wild goose. It's what this whole festival is about. Well, ever since it started, that's the sense I got about wild goose from, from listening to authors, from watching videos, from being with people who've been here. That's the sense I got about wild goose, that it's, it's, kind, of a, it's kind of a jubilee uh, moment in, in time and place. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one, one thing I wanted to ask you, I don't know quite how to phrase the question, but it seems to me that there'd be some connection between the fact that you had problem with your eyesight and impairment and a connection to people who the Gospels describe as the least of these yes. things people don't yes. care for. And I don't know if that's true or not. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I wonder if there's a little bit of a story to, there. To, to, to an extent, um, when I was a little boy, uh, living in Grand Rapids, Michigan, in a mm -hmm. row house in a, in a fairly... Uh, Low, lower middle lower class neighborhood kids didn't want to play with me because they didn't know how to handle a blind person didn't know what to do with me um and so i i felt somewhat rejected now that changed mm. uh, that changed in later high school and college but that orientation as a child mm. did in fact orient me toward people who were voiceless uh when i was in college i we shared library space with uh, wheelchair users and other people who were disabled, and there was a lot of crosstalk mm -hmm. um, between us. And I, in, in a sense, uh, got a chance on, on some boards and committees to represent mm -hmm. other people who, because I was not voiceless. Right. I, 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 I was a singer, I was a musician, I was, I looked pretty good, so I had a voice, but people who were, other people who were blind, people who were uh, wheelchair users, people who were disabled, they were, many of them, voiceless. And mm -hmm. I got a chance then to, to be in that group and also to represent that group in other places. So that was an orientation that was very strong. And then when we moved to San Francisco and lived in the hate, my gosh, uh, every other person that you talk to in the streets, a homeless person. and. I started writing music about ab about homeless people and mm. about you know about uh, people in the city who had nothing, and it just it just was a sort of a natural transition. Mm. Yeah, I understand. Is there something that um, is on your mind in terms of being at Wild Goose that you want to express or talk about? 
that I have failed to bring up in this conversation? Only that I am <laughs> filled with gratitude about this event. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just feel like I wish there were more of these around the country. I wish, uh, I wish that we could do this five times in the summer instead of one. Mm -hmm. I just, because it's so, it's so game changing, it's so mind changing and in, in this moment in history mm -hmm. when the country is positively falling apart at the seams, mm -hmm. I just feel like we need moments like this where mm -hmm. people of good good hope and good heart and good character can come and be revived and renewed to go home and live the call. Yeah, I, I hear you. Give you a hug. Yeah, buddy. Thank you for Thanks. all the stuff you have done in the past hey, much, and man. please keep writing, okay? Yes, yeah, keep, 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 keep and keep singing and I'll, I'll keep reading. <laughs> <laughs>